Okay guys, so as promised, for this video we will be reviewing Aaron Kofor's High Fire. As always, format for the book review, summary of the story, pros, cons, and then my final thought and ranking. With all that out of the way, let's hit the intro. takes place in the swamps of Louisiana where the last of the dragons, Vern, is living in hiding. But unlike the noble dragons of the past, Vern has completely gone native into the modern world and enjoys watching Netflix, ordering fast food. So he has become a very modern, equipped dragon. Our story also follows a young kid named Squid and his mission to try and get him and his mother out of their really bad situation that they are in. So Squid soon takes a job with a local smuggler to run things up and down the river, but he soon really gets more than he bargained for when and he sees something that could be very, very damaging to a very important official in his town. But soon, circumstances force Vern and Squid together, and they form an unlikely partnership. But soon after that, trouble strikes both Vern and Squid, and the two of them must work together to get themselves out of this tricky situation. Starting off the pro section here, the first pro I'm going to talk about is our main character, Squid. I think Kofor did an excellent job writing Squid. He comes off as a character who is in a really bad situation, but not of his own making. He's a really young kid, so he's forced to be in this situation, but he's a character who wants to work hard to get his mother and himself out of that situation. So I really do feel like a lot of people can relate to what Squid goes through. So I really feel like Kofor did an excellent job writing a super relatable character. Squid honestly has some really funny lines, particularly when he's interacting with Vern. There are some really funny exchanges between the two of them that make this book super, super funny. So the fact that Kofor was able to write such a good and relatable character and also give him such a funny personality, I really do give Kofor a ton of credit for being able to write Squib as good as he did. So second thing I absolutely loved about this book was Vern. Vern, honestly, is another highlight of this book. Kofor does a very good job of just writing this dragon that's super, like, tired of the world and just wants to be on his own and just live in exile. I feel like Kofor really does capture the feel of a dejected, world-weary guy in Vern. So, I really do appreciate that Kofor was able to capture that feeling so well within Vern's character. The other thing I really love about Vern was Kofor brings this sort of satirical comedy to Vern that is honestly absolutely hilarious. Again, like I said, the interactions between Squid and Vern are some of the best highlights in the book. I feel like there is just so much funny comedy between the two and such a really good chemistry between the two of them that it is a very good partnership. It feels more like a friendship than a partnership and eventually it does turn into a true friendship between the two of them. So Kofor did an excellent job writing the relationship between Vern and Squib and just making it such a wholesome and funny relationship while making this absolutely hilarious dragon that honestly does kind of remind me of Shrek. So another thing surprisingly that I liked about this book was the antagonist Hook. I absolutely love Hook in this book, particularly, because of how crazy the guy is. Kofor does a really good job of getting you into Hook's headspace, and Kofor does a really good job of just showing how absolutely crazy Hook is, and I absolutely think Kofor nailed Hook's insanity. What Kofor did, interestingly enough, is he went back and explained why Hook is so so crazy and not just like, hey, I'm crazy for no reason. Kofor gave us an explanation on why he is the way he is, so I really do appreciate that. But Hook being so insane 
makes him so fun to read. There are parts in the book where I'm reading what Hook's saying and I'm like, what are you doing? This is insane. But he's insane in that way where you just want him to be taken out because Vern and Squid are so fun and relatable as a duo that you want to see them absolutely destroy her. I feel like Kofor really did write a very good villain that I absolutely think is insane, but insane in the best possible way. So next thing I'm going to talk about is the possibility of a sequel for this book. I'm not going to talk about the specific ending, if you guys are worried about that. I'm not going to go into, like, specifics on how the book ends, so you guys do not have to be worried about being spoiled for this part. So the way Kofor ends this book leaves it open-ended enough where he could either go one of two paths. First path, he could be just leave High Fire as one standalone book, and I'd be fine with that. High Fire was a really good book and a really fun read, and I'd be completely fine if Kofor just left it as a standalone book, ends well enough that it could get a sequel, but it doesn't necessarily need one. The other hand, I really think that if Kofor wanted to do a sequel, he absolutely could. There is enough there in the story, I think, that he could figure out a reasonable way to make a sequel and make it work within the universe. Either path Kofor goes, I would be okay if this book was a standalone book or if we actually did get a sequel later on. So coming to the con section here, weirdly enough, there is not anything that I really disliked about this book. Squib and Vern were really good characters. Their interactions were absolutely hilarious and great. Hook was a very fun villain in just a crazy psychotic way that I really feel like Kofor did a really good job explaining why he was the way he was. So I really don't have a whole lot to say as far as the cons of this book. There wasn't really anything I disliked about it. Alright guys, so final thoughts on the book here. Like I said, I absolutely love this book. Again, like I said, there weren't a whole lot of things that I disliked about this. Vern and Squib were really good characters. They really worked together well. Hook was a very funny and crazy villain. So I really do like how Kofor wrote all three of his sort of main characters, I really think this book is definitely worth checking out if you want sort of a light-hearted fantasy read that isn't that long. So I'm going to give Eric Kofor's High Fire a 9 out of 10. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, please do not forget, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss a video. Down in the comments, as always, if you guys want to discuss High Fire, feel more than free to do so, but please keep it spoiler free for people who haven't read the book yet. If you guys have books you want me to do reviews on in the future, please do not be afraid to leave those down in the comments. So if you guys like that content and want to see more of it, I will link to my last video, which was my Rage of Dragons book review, if you want to go and check that one out. If you guys want to see more of my behind the scenes stuff, you guys can go and follow my Instagram, which is Riley Murray Book Reviews, and my Twitter, which is Riley T. Murray. I will leave links to both of those down in the description if you want to go and check them out. So just a heads up, I've been getting really busy with school and stuff lately, so if I don't post as regularly as I normally did, just please bear with me. I will try to get videos out as consistently as possible, but if I miss a week or two, just I've just become really busy with school and other things. Next video will be my review of Saba Tears and Ember in the Ashes. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you do not miss that video. Till then, have a great week and don't forget, keep on reading.